Welcome to the Robotics Through Science Fiction podcast. I'm Robin Murphy, and in this episode, I'll review Dean Koontz's classic robot horror novel, Demon Seed. It's the novel that started that whole trap by a smart house horror genre, and even better, it's told from the evil AI's point of view. And on a less horrific note, Demon Seed is a great starting point to talk about smart houses and the Internet of Things. Ian e. Forster was the first to imagine smart houses and the Internet of Things in his 1909 short story, The Machine Stops. The title of his story is a spoiler for what happens with the whole smart house concept. And since then, the narrative has shifted several times from Forster's original dependence on technology as making us weak. Next up was the we're smart enough to build smart houses, but dumb enough to have a nuclear war in Bradbury's poetic There Will Come Soft Rains in 1950. That was followed by Philip K. Dick's You Have to Pay Your House to Open the Door, spoof of rampant commercialism in Ubik, his 1966 more Christopher Nolan Inception than Inception book. And in 1973, Dean Kuntz published Demon Seed and created a fourth smart house narrative, the horror trope of your smart house is smart enough to be evil and wants to trap you. In the delightfully creepy Demon Seed, an AI named Proteus working out of a university lab computer over the internet, yay, academic research, traps the beautiful ex-wife of its creator inside her high-tech smart house. Proteus' stretch goal is to impregnate her in order to grow a body for itself. Being a physically situated agent but limited to a large and well-decorated house is not enough, so Proteus wants to be able to move around more and be able to have the senses of touch and smell. Oh, and one other plot point. It wants to have sex with the ex-wife. The whole smart house IoT genre got very dark. Very dark. Even Disney and the dreadful family comedy Smart House in 1999 couldn't really dispel that persistent creepy vibe of a future where your refrigerator keeps up with how, mil how much milk you're drinking. And perhaps fortunately, given the growing unease with how much of a smart house do we really want, the technology to actually make this work kept stumbling. Honeywell had tried in 1963 to market an automated kitchen where Everything was under centralized control, and all the appliances had to be made by Honeywell. Oh, that didn't catch on. Eventually, the X10 standard was proposed in 1975, and it was a distributed solution that would connect appliances and items built by different vendors. Okay, good. But in practice, the X10 system never caught on because it was too unreliable. It tried to connect the devices via their power lines, which is reasonable because Wi-Fi didn't exist back then, but power lines are notoriously noisy in terms of signals, so the connections didn't always work. Finally, 30 years later, the Internet of Things happened, and Wi-Fi was cheap and easy and pervasive. Nest was first to market in 2010 with a smart thermostat, and then the race was on to create smart houses. After eight years, the smart house Internet of Thing market is evolving into a hybrid of centralized and distributed control, where apps such as Alexa are becoming the interface to individual appliance apps. While consumers aren't being directly charged for it by the refrigerator for each transaction, a la PDK, Dwellers are paying for the Internet of Thing fridge and the software to access those features. And if the episode in the 2013 TV series Almost Human, the one about a weaponized and hackable home security system, seems far-fetched, there are at least two different companies selling inexpensive IoT security cams that let you talk to or yell at people or at annoying squirrels and possums lurking outside your house. So it can't be too long before someone connects that to the IoT sprinkler system to splash in a fender and then on to something more injurious. Of course, science fiction did miss some details about smart houses. No one, not even the cynical PDK, saw that smart houses would entail the inevitable signing away of privacy rights and data mining of personal habits. But possibly the biggest difference between smart house narratives started in 1909 and the reality of current day is that we're unlikely to be trapped in our house because we're never there. Consider that a big selling point for security cameras is to make sure deliveries aren't stolen because we aren't home to receive them. And for the refrigerator to remind us to pick more milk 
because we're always running around time, town. So let's hope the uh, science fiction got the part about the rogue AIs trapping people wrong as well. As an aside, Kuhn's uh, revised Demon Seed in 1997 to update the story with newer technology and more polished writing. Demon Seed was one of his very first books. And some of the reviewers are outraged at the changes as if Tolkien had gone back and killed off Frodo in Lord of the Rings. The 1997 version is fine. There's no need to try to find the 1973 original unless you really want to pay Coons twice. There was a 1977 horror movie with Julie Christie, which is pretty bad, despite Christie's determined acting. The really scary part about Demon Seed, the movie, is how movie studios just do not get the science fiction and horror genres. Well, let us know what you think of Demon Seed and Smart Houses. And in the meantime, Joe Williams, our RTSF site runner, has reminded me to remind you that if you haven't already done so, to please sign up for our newsletter and YouTube channel so you won't miss a thing.